In our last episode, we traveled to Sosa's Flay in Namibia, ate a springbok, my national symbol, and now that I'm back in Cape Town, I really miss the painted landscape. Goody, goody. When I consider our history as a species, human beings have been nomadic scavenging beach bums and bush babies for far longer than we've lived in houses or had running water. If it squirted, squeaked or breathed, it invariably ended up being slapped on the coals and cooked in the great outdoors. And it's only in the last couple of hundred years or so that we've forgotten the knowledge that made us the most successful hunter-gatherers and gastronomic kings and queens on the planet. My name is Justin Bonello and welcome to Cooked. A hard weekend, and it's not time to go away. <laughs> so we've been back from our overland trip for two weeks, and uh, two weeks too long in my mind because being back in the city really sucks. So we're on our way up to Swellendam to my mate Richard's house. It's called Skornaurt Country Estate or Country House. But our trip there wouldn't be complete without stopping off at Willie's Bush Pub. It's a cold day. Normally we come here on a hot day for a cold one. So we're gonna come here for a cold one on a cold day. Break our journey. Hello, how are you? Long time, eh? Yeah. This is I thought you were overseas. Right, man. <laughs> Stopping at a bush pub is always dangerous. You forget to switch off your lights. You stay for more than one. You get put in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> Which is that type of dangerous thing that happens when you go to a bush pub. But you've got to go because that's part of the thing about being in a car, going from A to B. You need to stop off at all those little places in between. So we're finally on our way through to Richard's spot. These hands you're going to see dirty, covered in paint. We really have to help him get ready for his wedding next weekend. So, 40 k's to go, and we're in Swellendam. In case you haven't got it, we're travelling from our house in Cape Town up to my mate Richard's B&B, the Squinnerwood Country House in Swellendam. <laughs> Hello, darling. Hi. 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 John. The jacuzzi needs to be knocked out. We don't okay. need to keep the tiles. We can keep the... Uh, now this is how serious it really is. Richard, Roy and Ali need our help to get ready for a wedding that's going to happen in less than seven days time. I, however, am going mushroom picking. It might just be you and me. I brought my basket and everything. We'll quickly leave them to carry on and see what happens. So we're following Paul Schlubber. Oh, I can't pronounce it, but he's, he, he, he has a little pottery here called the Buck, Bunken, Buckenberg. What was it? Is it the Buckenberg? The Buckenberg Pottery. And he's taking us to where we can get some seps, hopefully. I mean, it's the wrong season for it, because in Cape Town you'll never be able to get seps in, in November. So I'm quite interested to see what happens. But I'm planning this wild chicken, wild mushroom and chicken pie for this evening. Hello, Eileen. I'm Gana McInnes. My name is Justin. Thank you. Come on in. Hello, Fricky. I'm Gana McInnes. Hello, Fricky. Roy Hunter. Come on and they're just going to show us some mushrooms, what we're going to be picking in the forest. Fricky's going to take us in a couple of moments. Come through, Ev. Okay, so while Justin's out picking wild mushrooms, we've got four roast chickens on the go here. So the way we do this is we've got a bit of thyme, rosemary, and each chicken is stuffed with these two with onions, these two with lemons. And for all you people who want to baste chickens, a normal syringe can do the job. Mm -hmm. 
Just a quick word of advice. If you're going mushroom picking, take someone along with you who knows exactly what's edible and what's not. Because there's mushrooms out there that can kill you in 24 hours. No cure. You always cut them off and leave the roots in. Because it'll grow at the same spot again. Yes. Mm. Yes. 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 I just want to say thank you very much for taking us into your part of the world and showing us your mushrooms. Thank you very much and for the tasting of your fantastic liqueur. Yes, it's very nice. That very nice honey liqueur was very deadly and left me somewhat incapacitated for the rest of the afternoon. Thank goodness I was only having to cook dinner much later on. And action! <laughs> As, uh, I've forgotten your name. <laughs> As Andrew says, he's been slaving in the kitchen getting the chicken ready for us while I've been out in the forest picking mushrooms. The guys have been hammering away and things and they got a lot more of that tomorrow. I don't think anyone quite believed that uh, they would be doing what they've been doing today. I kind of feel, feel like we're doing the cooked home improvement show. Any case, the guys are hungry, so what we've got to do first is make up a wild mushroom and chicken pie. It starts off with these, so Andrew, yes, why don't you come and help me sure. with your chickens? He's very proud of these, he only burnt the one. He's going to debone those chickens and he's gonna give me all the bits and bobs because I'm gonna make a really nice stock out of that and what's left on the tray. The thing about a pie is essentially it's a filling and a covering. So we're gonna get straight into that. So all those bits and pieces, Andrew, that you take out, no bones. You want some onion? You can throw the onion in there, everything. And then I'm gonna get into pan frying our Belitus edulis, our most incredible mushrooms. Just a little bit of garlic and chili. Because what I wanted to do is reduce down so you don't have all that goo coming out when you uh, chuck it into the pie. John, anyone? In fact, Grant, you can come give us a hand considering you, all you gotta do is take off the yellow bit there from you. Just tweak it off like that. Yeah, so we just got to get this done because I think uh, if you swing the camera around at all these people staring at me, they're all a bit peckish and they're going to need the energy because tomorrow we've got a whole list of things. Darren, how many things on our list to do tomorrow? Paint, four million, four million and two. Blob of butter, a little bit of olive oil and then garth, garlic and it's chopped there and start frying those mushrooms up. And I'm just, wait a second. The amazing thing about mushrooms is you know how they're going to reduce down. Chuck that garlic in there. Oh, bro. No, that's good for now. And butter helps release the flavor of, the, of these mushrooms. So, uh, Garth, you're gonna handle that for a couple of minutes. If you can keep frying them up for me when they've reduced down nicely, bring them across. Cool. So if uh, Mr. Faber can just finish up with this side, I can make a stock because Really what I've got to do now is make a bechamel sauce, which essentially is 60 grams of butter, so 125 grams of flour, 250 mils of cream, 750 mils of milk. And I can add the stock in. And then we're gonna pour that over everything. When Garth's finished with the mushrooms, Faber's finished with this. Did that all make sense? Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Bechamel sauce with the stock flavoring all over your chicken and wild mushrooms. Time, fresh time. Just wanna wet the edges of this just to help the pastry stick on it. That'll give it a double layer of pastry on the outside edge. Now, puff pastry, what you do with it, is when you cook it, you uh, put it in the oven for 20 minutes at, 100, at 220 degrees Celsius, and then you reduce the heat down to 190 for the last 20 minutes, at which stage your pie will be fantastic the tricky part here. If you don't want the pastry to collapse in when it cooks, stick an onion in the center of your pie. Try and make it airtight all the way around. And then we're just gonna trim off the long bits, but we can make those into decorative things on top of the pie. 
using the back of a knife, you can just give your edges some detail. And it's also squashing it down. And what this will do is we'll give the pastry a lovely golden color on top. And that's it, I think it's ready to go in the oven. So all that's gonna happen now, it's gonna bake at 220 degrees for 20 minutes. So we're gonna drop it down to 190 degrees Celsius for another 20 minutes and then we're ready to eat. And this is gonna be had with a little bit of an avo, apple, fresh cream, and uh, lemon juice salad with a whole lot of fresh leaves and stuff and that's that. Dinner outside, 40 minutes from now. Sometimes I might seem unconventional. Sometimes I try to avoid the usual. But people try to tell me how to live. I try to live my own life my own way. You know I think you are so beautiful. The way you dance along the street. You give me hope, you help me to believe. Bring the sunny skies to me. Let me live my life. Oh, let me live my life. Let me spend my time. Spend my time. Go and live your life. Dinner's it's done. It's a long day ahead of us tomorrow. Everyone's got like all their allocated tasks. And I think everyone's going to retire early tonight. We'll just uh, see what happens. <laughs> I feel like throwing the table. <laughs> Jeez, that was horrible. <laughs> you put the egg in your mouth and you chew it till it's nice sure. and pasty. Then you put some salt, Tabasco, swish it up nicely, and then you mm. swallow it with the tequila. So like oysters. With yeah. the shell. With the shell stuff. Yeah. So <laughs> first the egg. Oh, put it in your mouth and chew it. <laughs> So we woke up this morning to a little bit of rain and it's delaying the work here. Richard's got six days left until he's got the wedding and uh, you kind of just got to hold your fingers that it abates and that we can all get going and help him and carry on building and things outside. However, it doesn't stop my work because I'm in the kitchen. So, this morning, I'm gonna make some uh, strawberry jam and a milk bread, and I've got some lovely cheeses and cold meats and things that I'm gonna feed the guys with as a little bit of tea time, I guess, for them. So I'm gonna get straight into it, starting off with the strawberry jam. So I'm using a kilo of strawberries to 750 grams of sugar. We're just gonna let the sugar Amalgamate with the strawberries. I'm gonna give it a quick little stir. Looks like a lot of sugar, is a lot of sugar. So while the strawberries and sugar are drawing, I'm gonna get straight into making the milk bread, and that's straightforward. We've got 45 grams of dry yeast, 45 grams of sugar, three teaspoons of salt, three eggs, some sunflower oil, some butter, and 1.2 kilos of flour. Also got 675 mils of warm milk, heated to about 45 degrees, which is what I need to activate the yeast. So first thing we've got to do is activate the yeast, because that takes about 10 minutes. Sprinkle your yeast on, put some flour on top just to keep the heat in. So now that we're just going to put to one side. 1.2 kilos of flour. Add all your dry ingredients first, so sugar, salt, in there for a moment. Just going to beat these eggs up, and then I think uh, the yeast is almost ready for us to make the bread. And we're just going to chuck that into the egg. Just fold it around. Make a well in the centre of your flour. Pour your mixture in. Add in the rest of your milk. We're going to start mixing this up. Once we've kneaded this out a little bit, we're going to roll it into some sort of sausage shapes and coat it in a little bit of olive oil. Put them into a bread tin and let them rise for 40 minutes. Just put some clean foil on it now and put it in a warm spot. So what we're gonna do now is um, put this onto a, a gentle heat because we want the sugar to be dissolved totally in with the strawberries. And you've got to remove the scum off the top of the jam. 
Now, to just finish off the jam, you've got to take sterilized jars, sterilize them by just pouring boiling water all over them, and then you want them to be warm when you add the jam. So we're just going to chuck these in our oven. This is preheated for the, for the bread, just for a couple of seconds. See how it's sticking like that? And you can see if you touch the surface, it almost looks like it's getting a skin on it. That's perfect. That's almost ready to throw into the jar. Let it cool down. Hey. Fresh strawberry dram. Dram, dram. With freshly baked bread just now. Oh, you got a taste. You see all the seeds there and things. The jar is very hot. I'm gonna let it cool down now. I think it's my turn now to go and check out what's happening outside. I think it's stopped raining. Maybe we can all start jackhammering and working again now that the weather's clearing up. We hope, cross fingers. You can come outside. Ah, Mr. Putter, so what am I going to be doing while the bread's raising? Oh, okay. uh, if you can just give me a hand with that one couch. So it's been 40 minutes, you can see how they've doubled in size. Now all that's gotta happen, into the oven, preheated oven, 190 degrees Celsius for about 40 minutes. Come eat, man. Bread's on, come, it's just come out the oven, Richard. So while everyone's coming up, I'm gonna have the first test. And I love the end of the loaf. should beware the basket. Roy told me about David and Felicity Potter and their garden. Those sheep you hear bleating in the background are part of their garden. And we're coming here to nick a whole whack of artichokes. Therefore, beware the basket. Felicity, thank you for having us again. David, superb. We had such a good pie last night. I have an organic vegetable garden and it's nothing like David and Felicity's one. They have absolutely and utterly everything growing under the sun right here. And that fresh garlic with a couple of fresh artichokes is going to turn into a perfect little pasta dinner later on. Thank you. I'm not going to kiss David though. <laughs> Back to the house to cook. Help him get there. Thank you so much for everything. <laughs> right now, the artichokes that are in the basin over here have been in there for sort of, I don't know, half an hour salting in salt water. Now, what that'll do is kill any bugs that have been lurking around in the leaves. Right now, before I Boil these up in some salted water. I've just got to cut the stems off and we're going to throw them in a pot bottom side down first. Straight in. And stalk side down. It's a little bloxom there. We're trying to make them smile because they look so miserable cooking with you. Right, 30 minutes and we'll come to a taste test. It's time for a drink outside of the room and to admire the work that we finished. So these have been on the go for 30 minutes. And the way you test artichokes is to take the biggest one in the pot, pull him out, or her out, whichever way you want to look at it. See that, you can see my teeth marks. That's all you eat from these leaves. And if on your biggest artichoke, it's tender, 
and they're ready. Okay, so now what we're going to do is pull off all the thicker leaves at the bottom, place them all in a baking tray, that side up, and must stand them upright and tight as you can. We'll open them up together. Grab a couple of these really small baby cherry tomatoes and just drop them in in between all over the place here. Open up the artichoke, see like that, drop them in. What we're going to serve this with is a, just a tagliatelle, and we're going to take all these leaves, drizzle some olive oil over it, some fresh garlic that's sitting in the zinc over there, and uh, some chili. Toss that all together with some fresh tagliatelle. Serve it with one of these, some oregano, because that's always bloody marvelous with tomatoes. <laughs> 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 And some garlic butter, mm. some mushrooms, brown mushrooms just chopped up, and I'm just gonna scrunch them, breadcrumbs, and then some parmesan cheese grated. And then we're gonna whack this in the oven until this melts on top, and then we're ready to eat. Now I'm just gonna finish off the other one, chuck it in as well, and then uh, we're about 20 minutes to 30 minutes away from eating. All I've got left to do is cook up some tagliatelle. Mix it up with all the, the offshoot, the, the outer leaves of the artichokes with some garlic, some chili, some olive oil. And then we're eating with the fresh salad we got from the gardens of David and Felicity. I'm gonna turn that into the pasta, serve it with the baked hearts. Give us 15 minutes and I think it's time to move to the dining room. Oi. And Roy, our kind hosts, and we have to say a big thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Yeah, here, here. Cheers, cheers. We just stopped off for a little quick bite to eat on our way home from Swellendam at De Molen, which is um, Gareth Beaumont's folks' place. It's on the R60 between Swellendam and Ashton on the old Montague Road. And yeah, uh, we're really here because this isn't the end of the episode, because we could never do justice to Richard, Ali and Roy's home and their Squinohut country estate if we didn't go back and show you what it's actually going to be like in three months' time. So we're just going to have a bite to eat here and uh, we'll show you what their place is going to look like in a couple of seconds. There are only two types of people in life, talkers and doers. Richard, Ali and Roy are doers and they've turned one of their pipe dreams into a reality and you've got to respect that. So if you're ever out that side of the world, get into Swellendam and check out Squirnerwood because they'll treat you like you're part of the family. I give up, I can't get the stove to work, man. 
So I get off stage, right? Drop the mic. Walk up to these hot chicks. I'm all like, what's up, ladies? My name's Slim Fabi. I'm the key grip in Swellendam, baby. <laughs> <laughs>